Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Tonight, Fiji Navy issues a stern warning as one goes missing in rough seas. Two Fiji hardwood sites remain closed and police investigations begin. And new fire trucks to make work easier. But first tonight, the government-run quarries at Lomo Lomo in Lautoka and Nasinu will cease operations at the end of next month. 57 employees will be made redundant. Fiji Roads Authority CEO Neil Cook says the quarries were assessed and found not to be viable business operations. The assessment revealed that the plants are obsolete and the equipment requires extensive maintenance. Cook adds the closure of the Nasino operation is also due to the expiry of a native land lease which has subsequently been picked up by basic industries. All of the former employees will receive redundancy payments. The Fiji Navy has been on high alert for the last seven days, keeping a lookout for any mishaps at sea given the rough conditions. One man has gone missing after the fiberglass boat he was on capsized at the Ngavo Passage last night. As Akosi Tatale reports, this has the Navy questioning why anyone would risk their life in treacherous seas. Six people left Moturiki at 9.30 last night, sailing to Levuka. This is similar to the conditions they would have encountered over the 14-kilometer journey. It's unfortunate that we've had an incident uh, uh, last night that uh, occurred in Motoriki. So it has uh, shown us that people are still not adhering to the weather reports. Five people managed to swim to shore. But what's more worrying are reports that there were no life jackets on board. I can confirm that we've uh, uh, talked with one of the survivors. They, uh, one of them has told us that they, they did not have life jackets when they departed from Ulimbau on the way to Ovalau and when they capsized, they did not have life jackets on. The Navy is still coordinating the search for a 49-year-old man missing in the Ngavo Passage. Tawake says his men will be kept busy as long as this adverse weather lasts. People have a tendency to ignore safety warnings. Well, only when mishaps happen, then we try and point fingers. Who, you know, who, who, who is to blame? You know? uh, the first thing, if you just listen and, and hear to the adverse uh, weather report, uh, we wouldn't have been here. We wouldn't have been uh, reporting on this or even advising mariners to adhere to the weather. There is tonight a damaging heavy swell warning for all low-lying coastal areas of southern and western Vitilevu, southern Vanualevu, Taveuni, Kandavu, and nearby smaller islands. If these large vessels aren't going to risk sailing in this weather, neither should anyone in small outboards. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Fiji Hardwood Corporation has closed its Waivunu sawmill in Serua and its Navutu manufacturing site in Lautoka, as they've been running at a substantial loss. The company says workers at the two sites have been given three weeks paid leave. A government statement says the financial situation of the two sites and the poor condition of equipment has been caused by a lack of investment in maintenance. The suspension of operations comes as part of the restructuring and reorganizing of Fiji hardwood. Meanwhile, Lautoka police are questioning employees over thefts at the two sites. Fiji hardwood says cash and equipment worth over $24,000 plus a significant amount of timber was stolen from the two locations. The National Fire Authority today received the newest additions to its fleet of fire trucks. The six new trucks, brought in from Country Fire Authority in Australia, were handed over to the NFA this morning. Eleanor Tarangai View reports. This is one of the six new trucks that will give firefighters much needed confidence when responding to fires, large or small. There used to be a huge outcry from the members of the public when the fire trucks used to arrive at the scene without any water. But I'm grateful that uh, since then, we, since uh, we have commenced the uh, reform of the NFA at the start of last year, there has been a great improvement 
in terms of any phase response to fire. Each truck has two pumps, a water tank with a holding capacity of 1,400 litres of water and a 200 litre foam tank. That will assist in uh, fighting fires. Eh? With some uh, fires, they need the uh, foam to put them out. Eh? So in these uh, trucks, we have both capacity. Uh, uh, we know that it's a fire that can be put out quickly by foam, then we will utilize the foam. Eh? With these new additions, the NFA now has 46 fire trucks, but 13 of them are more than 20 years old, while another 10 are a decade old. At the moment, because each station has one truck, and when uh, they, those older trucks, eh, we're just keeping them running on the road. Eh? We have not been able to undertake full maintenance. Eh? So some of the stations we've allocated these trucks to, we will bring those trucks in and conduct an overhaul eh? so that the trucks can take us another 10 years. Eh? All six trucks cost the NFA $100,000, but to top it off, Country Fire Authority donated special rescue equipment worth half a million dollars. The trucks and equipment will be distributed to fire stations in Suva, Valilevu, Nausori, Nandi, Savu Savu and Lambasa. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC News. The Pacific Conference of Churches is against any deep-sea mining activities in Fiji and the region. The PCC says it speaks not just for itself, but for millions of its members across the Pacific. Roland Karoy reports. With more than 6 million members Pacific-wide, the PCC's main concern is the impact that deep-sea mineral exploration will have, let alone mining. concern is about the impact and damage of the ecosystem, especially the ocean ecosystem, that uh, might deprive our people from the main uh, income, also from the resources, huh? fish and all the ocean resources and that will affect the whole livelihood of our people in the Pacific. SOPAC has proposed that there be a legislative and regulatory framework with deep sea mineral exploration and mining so that there is minimal impact. You know if there are some disturbance you know it'll be uh, minimal compared to if you were uh, if you have to compare it to a big open pit uh, mining operation on land. It'll be relatively small. Despite this explanation, the PCC remains staunch. Not enough is known for us to have a, an accurate and definitive position on, on the potential damage. And then you have a trend that is you know, leading to more and more and faster and faster, is, faster issuances of licenses. No, it's like a full speed ahead uh, without knowing what we would consider enough to make informed, concrete, definitive decisions. The PCC has called for a stop to all seabed mining research in line with a resolution by regional church leaders in Honiara last month. With three exploration licenses already given out, the PCC believes mining will go ahead because of big money. Despite this, the NGO says it will fight on. Questions have been sent to the Attorney General. Roland Karoy, FBC News. Nandi International Airport is in for an $80 million refurbishment starting in August. The work was scheduled for last September, but AFL has been putting it off until now. As Christopher Chand reports, our international gateway will take on a more modern look. It's going to lift the image of Nandi Airport. The new look will include increasing the height of the departure check-in area, and moving these duty-free shops to the top level. It's not uncommon to hear people complaining about uh, the air condition not working at the airport, some of the services not being up to, the, up to par. What we intend to do from this project is uh, to ensure that the facilities and amenities are there, which is uh, in line with what is offered in major international airports, such as uh, uh, Hong Kong, such as uh, Singapore, the multi-million dollar upgrade is targeting new and improved passenger facilities with a contractor to be appointed by the end of July and work proper to begin a month later. Beginning to mid of August to start construction and it should take about 13 months to complete. Um, having said that we are trying our best to, to minimize the time as much as possible and if we can then that will be done. AFL has set the bar pretty high, wanting an airport which can rival some of the best around the world. To ensure that we come up with something that is going to last for the next 30 or 40 years. 
Nandi Airport is the region's aviation hub, serving more than 1.2 million international passengers and over 450,000 domestic passengers every year. For our tourists, this is the first and last impression of Fiji. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Coming up, small businesses learn the ins and outs of export. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to The Morning Ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM, Today's Seed Music. Nimbula, Medango Nimilote Nai Sorotamboa. Nama kia omena rua kina ona na vea kavi moni te kina vaka raumbuka. Rongo mena vea sama kina vea baka baro taki nini reko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na buongani vea niano. Ngai nama kia okina. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. If you quit smoking three packets a day, you can save enough money in a year to travel around the world. That's one of the key messages from the World Health Organization as it tries to reduce cigarette smoking. Chanel Sivan has more on World No Tobacco Day. To suck up cigarettes. A complete ban on tobacco advertising, promotion and sponsorship is what the World Health Organization is pushing for. According to Dr. Temo Wanganivalu, the key in reducing cigarette smoking is to reach youths before they get hooked. It's been shown by research that one third of the experimentation done by the young people is because of the ex or is their exposure to the marketing by the tobacco industries about their product. You know, if we can't save this generation, at least we can do something now, today, to save the next one. Smoking causes cancer, it harms unborn babies, it is also linked to heart diseases and stroke. It is also displayed on cigarette packs as a deterrent. If you're smoking three packets a day, you could actually save enough money to go for a round trip around the world at the end of the year. Money spent on cigarette is money not spent on the very necessity that your family needs. You have patients who come into clinic and you ask them, why didn't you come for your clinic last week? Said, no bus fare. You look inside their pocket, it's a packet of cigarettes. No one saying it's easy, but quitting is one of the best ways to ensure a long, healthy life for smokers and those who inhale second-hand smoke. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. Small business owners will soon be able to export their products thanks to the Fiji Export Council. The organization has taken charge and is assisting small operators with the right set of skills to compete internationally. Wasita Kotawasawasa reports. Some of these people are farmers and handicraft dealers who've never had their chance to tap into the export market. The Fiji Export Council with the Learn Fast Centre of New Zealand wants to change that. We are aware that uh, there is a very lack of uh, awareness in terms of export literacy. Uh, people are not, do not know how to export. So this is why we feel that it's very important that um, we conduct this kind of workshop. This is the first of a series of workshops over the next six months themed Closing the Gap. Warwick McCormack says this program will teach these businesses what protocols to follow. The big difficulty always is, um, is getting a small person to realise their goals. That's difficult. The technology side of it has become a lot easier. Uh, the problems we still have really is with protocols, with governments, with regulations, things like that. The Export Council is hoping that through initiatives like this, Fiji can hit the target of contributing 65% to Fiji's GDP by next year. Vosita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. It was a special day for students at Hilton School in Suva. For the first time, they had the opportunity to celebrate Children's Day with students and teachers from a regular school. Students of St. Joseph Primary paid a visit to Hilton School and were welcomed with open arms. Speeches and dances by teachers and students were part of the celebration today. 
it is an opportunity for them to get to know the students from other schools. So maybe in one way preparing them just in case they move into one of these regular schools. The regular schools will be aware of uh, the capabilities and the disabilities that our children have and also for our children they will be able to feel uh, at least welcome or comfortable. There are 76 special needs students at the Hilton Special School. We turn to sports now and Jamie, we've been building up to Fiji's opening PNC game all week. How were the captains runs today? Well, Jackie, in fact, despite the downpour today, there were positive vibes from both camps. So what can we expect tomorrow? Well, that's a tough one, Jackie, because firstly, the flying Fijians will be out to start their PNC campaign on a high. While on the other hand, Japan coach Eddie Jones will not want to settle for back-to-back -back losses. So, we have two teams both hungry for a win and weather conditions that could ruin it for either. More details after the break. Bula! Oya wa sala belawa. Do ba teke yau mena diwa kina tini karo na kaloko na singole boni moni tiki na waga rumbuka. Kako ni valata na no musu ni sarisari. Na kai samaria ndolo loma leo ni wani ni nau. Ongori ke de mena diwa kina tini karo na kaloko na singole boni moni tiki na waga rumbuka. Ena bula FM number two ena sere. Jahan ho pyar ka basera aur rishto ki khushbu. Wohi apka apna ghar sansar. Join me on Ghar Sansar, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 12 p.m., only on Radio Fiji 2. Welcome back, UFFBC Sports. The Flying Fijians are expecting to play in wet conditions when they face Japan tomorrow in the Pacific Nations Cup encounter at Churchill Park. And the team feels that when it comes to crunch time, they can adapt better than the Japanese counterparts. Salen Daudakadaka was at the captain's run. The Flying Fijians held their captain's run on a wet Albert Park in Suva today. The ground conditions gave the team a glimpse of what to expect when they face a determined Japanese side tomorrow. Yeah, Japan has got a good team, they've got a good boys, they've got some uh, talented boys with them. But uh, with this weather, with this condition, who knows what's going to happen because We've been training in this condition for the last few days and we believe and are trusting God that uh, we'll, we'll deliver it on Saturday. Japan may have lost their first PNC match against Tonga last week, but the flying Fijians are aware that the Cherry Blossom's power lies in their forwards. Yeah, we've been analysing the game last week against Tonga. They, they managed to score two tries uh, from a rolling mall from a driving line-out. And we've been practising how to defend it uh, throughout this, uh, this week. And... Uh, I'll just leave it to the boys and for the team to try and defend it tomorrow. Coach Inoke Male has named the strong side for tomorrow's match. Nandronga fullback Simeli Konferendi, who is under an injury cloud, is currently bracketed at fullback with Isaiah Natonga and will need to pass a final medical test tomorrow morning if he is to play against Japan. The team will need to win their first match tomorrow if Fiji is to improve from our 15th place world ranking. Challenge over the Kadaka. FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the FRU announced late this afternoon that Simeli Koni Ferendi has been passed fit to start at fullback with Aisana Tonga to start off the reserve bench. The Japanese also held its, its final run this morning and for coach Eddie Jones who took over last year, he'll be going into tomorrow's game with a few reasons to get a win under his belt. Indra Singh has the details. Having won in every competition since taking over, the Pacific Nations Cup is one that still remains out of reach. This is the record that the Japanese mentor wants to break when the side faces the Flying Fijians tomorrow. There's always pressure, but uh, yeah, our goal is to, to be at our best in 2015. You know, we've got a young team, we've, we've changed the way we play, we've changed the, the way we select, so it's, it's step by step and you know, I'm happy with the progress. Already the loss against Tonga is being used as the motivating factor to better the record against the hosts. And the Flying Fijians will have to be wary of what the Cherry Blossoms are bringing to the park tomorrow afternoon. Confident playing well, you know, we've got to play well to beat uh, Fiji. Uh, you know, Fiji always has a talented team, we're playing them away. You know, away. Uh, they'll, be, they'll be their usual energetic and, uh, and combative selves. So if we play well, we'll, we'll, we'll do really well and uh, our preparation in the case that we will. The Fijians are predictably unpredictable, but one player who knows what to expect 
is one who has the same name as Fijian coach Inoke Male. But sure, will not do any favours for the Fijians. I think it's a chance for us if we can uh, move the ball around, you know, uh, shift, shift the ball and move it to space instead of trying to uh, muscle it up with, uh, with their size. All preparations are complete and now it's time for game day. 24 hours from now, we shall find out what the outcome is at Churchill Park. Interesting, FBC Sports. 500 swimmers from 26 schools nationwide braved the cold and rain in Suva today to be part of the school swimming carnival. Swimming officials say the large number of participants this year is a positive sign for the sport in Fiji. Shelvin Chand was poolside today and caught up on the action. Swimmers from primary and secondary schools have gathered at the aquatic centre in Suva. This has delighted the organisers who feel this is needed for the sport to grow. This really is building the base for the national body and it's uh, so needed. I mean, we need clubs to be uh, centred not only around Suva but around the other districts. The feeling is that the large number of entrants this year shows that people are taking water safety seriously. Considering there's such a high rate of drowning in the country, albeit um, this is competition-wise, um, they are still taking on swimming, which means there's a very good likelihood that they will know about the dangers of water. For the coaches, today has been a busy day, especially with the cold weather blasting the capital. Uh, I'm running to the result, uh, res result room to see the, the medal tally and uh, amazingly we are, being, we are at, at the moment currently collecting seven goals. And I have a very small squad of 20, 25 swimmers. And most of those goals are coming from our 9 and 10 year olds. So I'm very proud of them. The school's swimming carnival finishes tomorrow. And despite the cold and rain, it promises to be another thrilling day at the pools. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. The Fiji Football Association says that Lambasa has enough talented players available locally to make a strong squad for the Vodafone Fiji Fact. The comments come after Lambasa football said they would like their Hikari and Amical base players for the tournament. Shalvin Chan reports. Lambasa did not get the international transfer clearance for five players and they want Fiji FA to grant it to them. However, a senior Fiji football official says there are enough local players. As far as I am concerned, there are so many talented players in Lambasa and with those Hikari boys, uh, Lambasa has used them and they have never won any tournament. So wh why should they worry about those boys? Uh, the, the boys that are here, the, the ones that uh, have already played in the National League games, they should train them properly and then give them games. Lambasa football feels that Fiji FA is in the wrong by not granting these players the ITC. We have researched extensively for the perpetrated rule and we have found it nowhere. So. Now we have um, requested FIJFA to produce that particular rule which they are referring to and um, we will see how that goes. Ibrahim is a former Lambasa administrator and feels the lines should rethink. I want to wait for those uh, Hikari boys and I am telling you as soon as those boys come there will be problem in Lambasa camp. Uh, that is going to start off and uh, that is 100% uh, sure that there will be problem in the Lambasa game. Lambasa's last success in a tournament was in 2011, and that was with the help of the Hekari players. Maybe that's the reason why the officials keep looking at these players. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. And that wraps up sports for me from the week. From me for the week, I'll be back on Monday. Until then, have a safe weekend. Good evening. <laughs> All state land available for lease will be advertised from next month for anyone who's interested. Permanent Secretary for Lands David Tambose Wanga says there's a huge demand for state land and a committee will look into all the applications. He adds this new system and advertising vacant state land is more transparent and avoids unethical practices. Very few uh, state land that is vacant. The only available land that uh, for state land is the ones uh, that have been surrounded 
all the ones are that have, their leases are terminated because of breaches. So these are the ones that are, are available. It's understood that very little crown land is left unoccupied. Our favorite weather girl joins us now. Jen, I'm sure you're excited about tomorrow night. Oh, absolutely, Jackie. But to more pressing things first, it was an incredibly wet day for Suva with periods of rain and thunderstorms throughout the day. The rest of the country experienced some clouds and showers. Pan Lautoka had nice sunny weather this morning before eventually succumbing to rain and clouds in the afternoon. Today's temperatures now, it's 29 degrees for Nandi, Savasavu and Lambasa. Lautoka has the highest this evening on 31 degrees. Occasional rain is forecast throughout the country tomorrow. Today's photo was taken by Nida Nikat of Maro Singatoka. And she shot this at a place familiar to all living along the coral coast, the sand dunes. Cheers Nida for the photo, have a wonderful weekend. And if you can manage it, please join the FBC crew and the beautiful Miss Wolf Fiji girls at the Pearl tomorrow night. I'll see you there. You stay safe and stay smiling. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. And a quick look at the headlines. A man is missing at sea and the Fiji Navy says it's on high alert until the current spell of rough weather improves. Two mills owned by Fiji Hardwood Corporation remain closed as police investigate thefts. And six new fire trucks are shot in the arm for the National Fire Authority. This week's poll question we ask, should Fiji have a new national anthem? To take part, visit www.fbc.com.fj. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's your news for tonight. I'll be back again on Monday. Until then, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. पांच पांच बच्चे होंगे पांच 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 हाँ ए मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेनु सुनते रहिए मिर्च एफएम मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक